What if Naofumi was a Assassin's Shield Hero Creed Part 3 What will happen when Naofumi is smarter, more cunning, and less naive than canon? What will happen when Naofumi is willing to do whatever it takes in order to reach his goals while following his creed? Chapter 3, New Allies Warning, the following story will contain a lot of murder, blood, typical murder stuff, except I'm not that good of a writer and have no idea what I'm doing so it probably won't be very gory. Daikoen as much as you and I like the Assassin's Creed series, I can't implement everything there is within the lore of the series. I am trying to keep Neofumi in his time of medieval Europe, and the Corridor of Memories is a function of the Animus, not the Assassins themselves. So no, I can't put it in the Corridor of Memories. Red Burning Dragon your idea is quite interesting, however, I just can't see Neofumi dual wielding, especially since he can only use shields. This is my very first FIC and the idea just floated around my head for a while so I figured that I might as well do something about it. I've only watched the anime and read the manga so it may or may not be canon. I am currently looking through the LN as I write, so it may take more time for me to write as I want to fact check my stuff. I'm also switching every name to be, first, last, so it's less confusing for me, and because I used the joke last chapter. Enjoy! Edit October 14th, 21 not a lot of change, I added a lockpick shield so he lockpicks the cell door rather than break the hinged off. Forgot about lockpicks tbh. Chapter 3, New Allies. Talking thinking reading transition. Skills slash abilities slash system an hour after sunrise. The other heroes started to rouse from their sleep as the sunlight started to stream through the window. As the heroes started to get out of bed, Neofumi quickly switched back to his small shield. He glanced at his status screen to check his mastery. His mood rose as he saw that his hidden blade shield had gotten to 42% after another hour. They were guided back to the dining hall to eat breakfast allowing Neofumi to net another 3 max SP. The other heroes were getting increasingly excited, ready to embark on the adventure of a lifetime. At about 10 o'clock, the king called for them. The heroes hurried to the audience chamber, and waiting for them were 12 people, dressed in armor and armed. It seemed that they were the ones recruited for the heroes. Neofumi heard chatter and looked up to the right to see a bunch of people on the balcony overlooking the audience hall. Why are there people here? They seem to be fancily dressed, unlike the maids and servants I saw yesterday. As we discussed yesterday, I have called for others to assist you on your journey. Apparently, my call did not go unheeded. Neofumi looked through the roster of adventurers. It seemed that there were knights mixed in as well. He also noticed a head of crimson hair which he remembered belonged to the princess. Now then, gathered adventurers, the king continued, please choose the legendary hero with whom you will travel. It seemed counterintuitive to Neofumi. To have the adventurers choose was worse than having the heroes choose, as there may be favoritism. Neofumi was proven correct when the adventurers gathered around their respective heroes. Ren had five, Motoyasu had four, and Itsuki had three. Meanwhile, Neofumi has none. While it was ideal for Neofumi the assassin, it wasn't for Neofumi the shield hero. The princess joined Motoyasu's party without hesitation, making Neofumi internally relieved. He didn't want to have to evade a party member, and if his theory was correct, the princess would not enjoy his company. Excuse me, what am I supposed to do? Neofumi called to the king. He would need to keep up appearances for now. I did not anticipate anything like this but I cannot force the adventurers to change replied the king. The advisor sighed, he's not very popular, is he? Neofumi was elated on the inside. He could explore unimpeded, and get to the person in the dungeon to get answers. Suddenly, a robed man approached the king and whispered something, and they laughed. What's so funny? asked Motoyasu. It seems that people are whispering around the castle. They are saying that among the four heroes, the shield hero does not know anything about our world. What? exclaimed Neofumi. It wasn't his fault that video games didn't exist in his world? The legends say that the four summoned heroes will have an understanding of our land. People are wondering if you will truly be able to fulfill the conditions set out in the legends. Motoyasu nudged Neofumi with his elbow. I guess someone was eavesdropping on us last night. That unnerved. Neofumi. He would need to be more careful in the future. He thought that he would be able to let his guard down as he didn't sense a presence outside the door, not that he was really paying attention. If someone was able to hide their presence in this world, 
then Naofumi would have to be even more careful. Naofumi sighed as he fell to his knees, putting his head in his hands. He was formulating a plan as he fell. I need to get to the castle dungeon fast. I need the info, and possibly a companion. If I free her, she'll probably feel indebted, and then I can get a free party member. The three other heroes looked at they the shield hero in pity and worry. While it was a shame that Naofumi had no one, it was like what the king said. They couldn't force their own team members to switch. Naofumi got up and started to leave. I'm going back to my room. I want to be alone for now. He got two-thirds of the way to the door before a voice spoke up. Wait. Naofumi turned around, trying to look as miserable as possible. If it pleases you, I could serve with the shield hero. Naofumi scrutinized the person speaking. It was the princess of all people. Hmm? Are you sure? Questioned Motoyasu. Yes. Naofumi noticed that the princess didn't act nervous nor anything to signify that she would rather stay in the party, but rather happy. But if she's so happy to join my party, then why join Motoyasu's in the first place? Ah, uh, I see. The old bait and switch. Smart, but only effective on the lesser man. As the red-haired woman walked toward Naofumi, he spoke up. I'm sorry, but I can't force you to leave his team. You don't need to join me out of pity or anything. I just... I just need some time. Naofumi walked out of the audience hall, leaving the woman shell-shocked that she was denied. Outrage filled her being, as she had never been rejected before. She calmed down, smooth henning out her face. At least it was the shield demon. Goodness, it would have been unbearable to suck. Up to him. But this really messes up the plan, how can I frame him if I'm not in his party? As she made her way back, Motoyasu tried to cheer her up. Don't worry, it's a male pride kinda thing. He'll get over it and be grateful you chose to join. She looked up to see a foolish smile on his face. She decided to deal with it later. At least he had a good face on him. With Naofumi. Naofumi faced a dilemma. He could either go and find the dungeon or go back to the room. If he went to the dungeon, he may have less resistance due to the main event in the audience hall, but he may not make it back to the bedroom in time and arouse suspicion. Naofumi decided to go back to his room, not before making a detour to the princess room to apply some makeup. He needed to make it look like he was crying. He applied some makeup around his eyes. First, he rubbed his eyes with his hand to make the eyelids seem swollen, then he applied some red eye shadow and blush to make his eyes seem red-rimmed from crying. He then got some black eye shadow to make him seem tired and sad. Looking in the mirror, he looked like a crying mess. Ruffling up his hair, he tidied up the makeup, putting everything back in its place, before leaving to his bedroom. He lay on the bed as he looked at his weapon book, looking through the shields and finding ways to use them. It turned out that going back to the bedroom was good as not even five minutes later, there was a knock on the door. Hey, Naofumi, are you okay? Itsuki called out. Naofumi hurriedly wrapped himself in blankets and curled up on his bed. Go. Away, Naofumi said in a shaky voice. This broke the hearts of the other three heroes, who came to check up on the shield hero before setting out on their adventure. Hey, we uh, got some starting money, said Ren we got 600 silver, and you were going to get 800, Motoyasa proudly exclaimed, but we managed to bring it up to 1000 since you had no party memo. Anyway, continued Ren, we brought it here for you. We'll just the door opened followed by a small thud and sound of clinking coins, before closing again. Put it here. Sorry about that, but there wasn't a lot we could do there. Thank guys, it me dash hiccup means a lot, replied Naofumi, in the weakest, shakiest voice he could manage. The others felt a pang of guilt run through them. Get better okay? We can meet up. Again sometime and maybe help you, said Itsuki, wanting to cheer up Naofumi. Tha dash hiccup thanks guys. I'll se dash hiccup see you later. As the sound of footsteps faded away, Naofumi got out of bed, and quietly slinked his way over, sniffling and hiccuping all the way. He hefted the bag up before making his way back to the bed. There were four gold coins and six hundred silver in the bag. Naofumi began absorbing a coin of each type into his shield. It unlocked three new shields for himself. Silver coin shield, 0% equip bonus trade deal to anything worth more than 10 silver will cost 1 silver less and will sell for 1 silver more. Gold coin shield, 0% equip bonus trade deal 3 anything worth more than 10 gold will cost 1 gold less and will sell for 1 gold more. 
Requirements met Bank Shield, 0% Equip Bonus Ability, Bank can store an unlimited amount of coins. Automatically converts coins when 100 of the coin type is stored. Automatically withdraws the number of coins requested. Not too bad if I do say so myself. Neofumi got up and reached for the doorknob before he heard footsteps. He pressed his ear against the door as he listened for the person walking his way. Their stride slowed as they got closer, and Neofumi began to hear what the person was saying. Sand silver, seriously, 1000 silver? I mean, that's way more than he needs, I have to get in his party, and then he can spoil me with all that money. Yosh. Neofumi had already made his way to the window before the woman outside finished her plan. The door began to open as Neofumi brought his legs over the windowsill, and by the time the person poked their head in, Neofumi was out of sight. Neofumi scaled his way above the window as he listened in to the bedroom below him. Sir Shield Hero, are you alright? Hmm, the bag isn't here. He must have left when the others did. Ugh, I knew I should have come with the others. Hmm. A breeze blew through the open window, attracting the woman's attention to it. Neofumi pressed himself against the wall as the woman approached the window. She peeked her head out the window looking down. Could he have? No, there's no way anyone could survive a fall like that, not even the shield hero. Neofumi stayed in his position, pressed against the wall over the window until he heard the door open and close. Slowly, he made his way back down, ready to hide again if another person decided to enter. No one did, however, and Neofumi re-entered the room. Neofumi switched to the hidden blade shield too before peering out into the hallway. Once he confirmed it was clear, he tried to find a way to the dungeon. Neofumi made his way down the castle, looking for anything that could help him. Eventually, he found a doorway guarded by a pair of guards. He guessed that whatever was in there was important. He looked around to see if anything could be used as a distraction. There was nothing that could create a lot of sounds nearby, so he checked his inventory. He was about to use one of the pots he saw on display, but then he saw the blades on his wrist. Smirking to himself, he extended the blades before striking them against each other. With the guards, clang hey who are, are you? What are you dash crash eyes widening, the two guards pushed their way towards the commotion. They saw a broken vase on the floor ahead of them. They drew their swords as they made their way over, except there was nothing there, no guard, no attacker, no blood, just a broken vase. What the? With Neofumi. Once. Neofumi threw a vase down the hall, he pressed himself in a corner and pressed against the wall. The pair of guards rushed by him, no doubt hyper-focused on the broken vase, allowing Neofumi to slip by into the doorway. Inside was a stairwell leading into a dark area. He slowly made his way down, allowing time for his eyes to adjust. As he made his way further underground, he was assaulted by the smell of human excrement, musk, and rotting meat. To say it was unpleasant would be an understatement. Unsurprisingly, Neofumi saw no guards in the castle prison, as they most likely wouldn't want to stand in here at all. He made his wall through the prison scanning through the iron bars, looking for a woman. The cells were mainly full of men, which made the process much easier, some had lost all. Hope, sitting in their cells, waiting for the day they die, some were looking back at Neofumi, glaring threateningly, and some were near death, old and skinny, with bones showing their skin. It was easy to find women, and easier to find out that she was noble. The only strange thing was that she was, exercising? Excuse me, miss. I am pretty sure I am looking for you. I am Neofumi Iwatani. What? Is your name? Pausing in the middle of a headstand push-up, the woman looked at Neofumi. She took a moment to stand straight again before analyzing Neofumi. Who wants to know? Questioned the woman. I have heard a few things here and there. I was wondering if you would be so kind as to confirm them. Okay. I have heard that you despite being a noble, were imprisoned. Your noble title had saved you from execution, but not others. Why were you imprisoned and why were the others executed? Ah, I see you have the gist of it. You see, my name is A. Claire Ciato, and I was apprehended when trying to prevent said executions. You see, four adventurers were wanting to party with the shield hero after the king sent out the request, but it was a trap, as the adventurers were captured and executed. I'm not sure why they did so, but it is most likely to keep the shield hero without reinforcement. I see, thank you for that. Now, I need some help, and I feel that you can help me. What makes you say that? Questioned Eclair. 
because you were exercising. It shows that you are a warrior, which is exactly what I need right now, Naofumi answered. What use could you have for me? My level had been reset to one, my equipment is gone, what use do I have? What a coincidence, I also happen to be level one. Before Eclair could ask what that had meant, Naofumi switched to the lockpick shield under his cloak and proceeded to pick the lock of the cell door. Once they unlocked, Naofumi opened the door, extending a hand to Eclair. She looked shocked as she took his hand and left. The cell. Do you know how to escape? asked Naofumi. This way, they quickly made their way opposite the direction Naofumi had arrived. Their speed was fast, and without armor weighing them down, what's wrong? questioned Naofumi. I hadn't had much to eat since being imprisoned, said Eclair, embarrassed by her mistake. However, they had no time to waste, as Naofumi scooped her up and put her on his back. Okay, hold on and tell me where to go. What? Okay, uh, take a ride over there. Like that, the pair made their way through the prison, quickly losing the guards, even when carrying another person. Eventually, they got to an exit. Naofumi kicked it open, hitting two guards with the doors on accident. The guards were bamboozled as they fell over, not seeing the pair of escapees as they fled into the city. In the city, after 15 minutes of running, Naofumi stopped in an alleyway before setting Eclair down. Are you all right? Asked Naofumi as he panted slightly. He saw her flushed face and was worried about any sickness. Eclair, however, was flushed due to the fact that she was carried all the way here, and by some stranger. I it's all right, but why would you want my help? Did. I never tell you. Naofumi switched to the small shield, I'm the dash shield hero, Eclair said in awe, interrupting Naofumi, but, why? How did you even know where I was? Why did you even dash Eclair was interrupted by a loud growling of her stomach. Her face exploded in a blush as Naofumi chuckled. You said you didn't eat a lot in the prison right? Let's get something to eat. We can keep talking. There. Ah, uh, sure. Naofumi switched to the hidden blade shield too as they exited the alleyway and made their way to the nearest tavern. It was mainly Eclair guiding Naofumi as he couldn't read. After finding a table and buying their meals, they continued speaking. Well as to why I broke you out of prison, it was because I heard of people dying from a pair of knights, and I didn't know why. When the other adventurers chose which hero to go with, I had none, which gave me a reasonable amount of suspicion regarding those who died, because there are people who think ill of me. And those people, are most likely affiliated with an organization that worships the three other heroes, based on the rosaries that I have seen. Naofumi explained. Oh, wow. Eclair was flabbergasted. How had he learned that much despite being recently summoned? Well yeah, that's the gist of what had occurred. I was going to stop them, but they arrested me on the premise of fighting the Knights of Melromark, even though they invaded my town. Your town? Well, technically yes, but it was my father's. You see, the Queen had wanted to resolve the hate between the humans and demi-humans, so she created a demi-human territory, some of which my family had owned. However, a wave struck a village on our land, decimating it along with my father. Some knights and soldiers tried to capture the demi-humans as slaves, and they succeeded, and so I've been fighting them off whenever they came back. And so when I came to the capital, I was arrested. I see. So what are demi-humans? inquired Naofumi. Demi-humans are a race that looks like regular humans, except they exhibit animal-like traits such as ears, tails, and enhanced senses. Is that so? I've never seen one before. You may see them every now and in Melromark. Melromark is a human supremacist country, thus demi-human slavery is legal. Thank you for the information. As they finished up their meal and left, Eclair spoke. So what is the plan? Hmm. I mean you have to go level up and get stronger right? Naofumi face palmed. He had forgotten that he needed to do that, as he had been more focused on getting her out and obtaining information. Ah, uh, I forgot. But that was what I needed you for actually. At first, I just wanted information but when it turned out that you had fighting experience, I thought that you would make a great ally. Really? I mean I would be most grateful to serve the shield hero dash stop. You aren't going to serve me. You don't have to lower yourself to me. We will be a team, yeah. Of course. So, where do we start? Um, let's go to a weapons shop. They seized all of my equipment when I was thrown in there. Sure lead the way. In front of the weapons shop. Here we are. Eclair. Chirped. Looking through the window, 
Neofumi saw many armors and weapons displayed. It was surprising to see all of these weapons just on display. Usually, only knights and soldiers could have swords, and the nobles bought them, not the knights themselves. Well what are you waiting for let's go, exclaimed Eclair as she pulled Neofumi into the shop. Welcome, the owner called out amicably. He was tall, with a bald head and beard. Hello, we're looking for some armor and weapons, said Eclair. Nope, just armor, said Neofumi. What why? Eclair complained, a pout formed on her face. Neofumi leaned and whispered, I already have a sword for you, don't worry about it. Eclair froze and blushed. It was the first time she had a man's face so close to her. Meanwhile, Neofumi looked through the armor. As much as he wanted to keep his original armor, he needed to save it for anonymity. He browsed through the light armor section. He already had a high defense and was used to speed, so he needed to get something that wouldn't impede his movement. Eclair was brought out of her daze and went over to Neofumi, looking for armor of her own. Hey, Sir Shield Dash, uh, what did I say? Um, to not lower. Myself. Yes. So, um, Neofumi. Yes. What's our budget? 250 silver each. Eh? Seriously? Do you even have that much? Yes, now go on. Choose your armor. Neofumi went back to his browsing as Eclair went off to search for her own armor. Eventually, Neofumi settled on a chainmail shirt with armor plates on the chest, back, and shoulders and leather pants. Seeing as how Eclair was still choosing, Neofumi went over to her. I've chosen my armor. Eclair had chosen a plated chest piece with leather reinforced pants and metal arm guards. It seemed to maximize defense while not limiting arm movement. Um, I kind of went over the limit by 50 silver. Is that so? Let's pay for it then. Eh? Really? Yes, but just this once. I'm not going to spoil you. Ah, uh, I see you've chosen your armors. That'll be 500 silver. Getting five gold from the bank shield, Neofumi handed the coins over. Thank you for the purchase. If you want, you can change in here. The owner suggested as he pointed to a few changing stalls. Seeing no reason to decline, Neofumi changed into his new armor. He folded his old armor and inserted it into the gem to store it, only for it to unlock something else. Clothes shield, 0% equip bonus ability. Closet allows the user to immediately switch sets of clothing. The set of clothing must consist of at least a shirt and pants. New outfit, Assassin's Brotherhood uniform, armored, Neofumi's eyes grew wide. The potential this shield had was staggering. Quickly unclothing himself, he folded the armor together before absorbing it. New outfit, name the set, starting armor, Neofumi whispered. New outfit, starting armor Neofumi whispered, starting armor, which made the armor he bought previously appear on his body. He exited the changing stall and saw Eclair talking to the owner while waiting for him. Ah what took you so long, bellowed the owner, you were making your girlfriend wait. Gee girlfriend. Haha, <laughs> very funny old man. Hey, I'm not that old. Yeah, yeah, come on Eclair, let's go. Huh? Oh yeah, by Erhart. Erhart stopped sulking at that, by Eclair? Have fun with your boyfriend. Eclair started sputtering as Nafumi pulled her towards the exit. Come on Eclair, there's no point in denying it. He's just teasing you. Erhart let out a booming laugh as the pair exited the weapons shop. Outside. So where is the sword? You promised me, asked Eclair. All right, said Neofumi as he pulled the sword out from his inventory. It was a steel sword with a steel handle and golden decorations. The hilt had a gem embedded into it with intricate engravings around it. Eclair grasped the sword mouth agape as she tried to comprehend that someone had just given her a sword that was probably worth more than she could imagine. All right, so where do we go from here Eclair? Eclair. Hmm? Oh right, we should head out to the main gate to fight monsters. However it is fairly late, so we may not get as many as we would like. That's fine replied Neofumi, I just want to get a feel for battle here. I'm not used to full-on confrontational battle. Oh, so you are used to battle. I mean, kind of? I'm not very well versed. In direct combat, just hit and run techniques. We should spar sometime. I might not be a high level, but I am quite skilled with the sword. Of course, I'm looking forward to it. I'm removing weapon copying from Neofumi's shield skill set. I went to volume 5 of the lane and he copies 12 shields, and they have variants. 
so I feel that Neofumi becomes way too overpowered when the stats stack up this early, so I'm removing it entirely. I will edit the other chapters that say that he can copy shields and remove them. This is not a Neofumi slash a Claire FIC. I'm what if Neofumi was a assassin?